For this final cardiology countdown of 2010, we wanted to pick out the top 10 studies that will impact uh, clinical care that the Cardiosaurus Editorial Board has come up with. So beginning at the uh, number 10 spot, we picked out the Simplicity 2 study that looked at a fascinating uh, ablation procedure of the renal artery to denervate it for patients with refractory hypertension. Not approved in the United States, but of great interest uh, as an evolving therapy for hard-to-treat hypertension. The number nine spot, we picked the RAFT trial that showed benefit of um, the CRT therapy for patients with mild heart failure. And this is one of a series of studies showing clinical benefit with mortality reduction of uh, cardiac resynchronization therapy. Uh, And so ever expanding benefit. At the number uh, Eight spot, we picked a study I presented, the DEFINE trial, that looked at a a CETP inhibitor that raises HDL by 138% anisotropib, and it also lowered LDL by about 40%. Uh, This is beginning a large phase three trial, but uh, so far has looked safe, and thus a promising future avenue for lipid uh, therapy. We put at the uh, number seven spot the ACCORD trial. Uh, The most recent component was the blood pressure target uh, part of the study, where there was not a significant benefit on overall cardiovascular death and myer stroke for a more aggressive target of systolic less than 120 as compared to less than 140. There was a lower risk of stroke, um, and so this has um, helped clarify a little bit whether we need to be very intensive on blood pressure lowering or not. Then at the number six spot, and it uh, was almost among the top five, was the Cure Active Genetics substudy. And this was the first to look at the cytochrome um, 2C19 uh, genetic polymorphisms and clinical benefit. And interestingly, they found no difference in the benefit of clopidogrel versus placebo in those who had reduced function enzymes for the 2C19 allele or those who had normal uh, enzymes. And so this pointed out that while the genetic polymorphism may be a factor, there are many others, and so there wasn't a significant difference in clinical benefit seen in that study. So moving into the top five, We have the PLATO trial that looked at the new P2Y12 inhibitor ticagrelor, and uh, this showed a clinical benefit of 16%, including a reduction in mortality relative to clopidogrel in patients with ACS. This was just approved for use in the European Union and is still under review by FDA currently. At the number four spot is the COGENT trial, a long-awaited study of randomized comparison of adding the proton pump inhibitor omeprazole to clopidogrel as compared with clopidogrel alone. In this study, no increase in cardiovascular events was seen, um, and that helped allay some concerns about cardiovascular risk. But a huge benefit was seen, a more than two-thirds reduction in the risk of GI ulcer or GI bleeding, and as such, a, a big benefit of adding a proton pump inhibitor. At the number three spot, we have the Emphasis HF study that looked at a plerinone, um, an aldactone or aldosterone uh, receptor antagonist, that um, was shown to reduce mortality in patients with mild heart failure. Again, a class two heart failure patient population with a huge benefit. And so this too shows an ever expanding uh, list of indications for aldosterone uh, blockade and hopefully will help increase its use clinically. At the number two spot uh, is the PARTNER trial, and this was the first uh, randomized comparison of the new uh, transcatheter aortic valve uh, implantation that showed a big benefit in patients with uh, severe aortic stenosis who are not operative candidates, and this was compared with medical therapy. It really opens the door to a whole range of new patients who could benefit from Uh, valve replacement, in this case, per 
subcutaneously. It's again um, not FDA approved, but there are ongoing uh, studies and um, a big benefit overall. And then finally, uh, another long-awaited area, uh, the RELY trial showed a benefit of the new anticoagulant dabigatran uh, as compared with warfarin for prevention of stroke or embolism in patients with atrial fibrillation. Uh, here, a reduction in the risk of stroke or embolism was seen with no increase in bleeding and a significant reduction in intracranial hemorrhage. And this is at the 150 milligram twice a day dose. Uh, lower doses were studied and shown to be equivalent with lower risk of bleeding and approved for use in Europe. Um, and um, as such, a big advance um, as compared with warfarin. Other studies have uh, recently been prevent, uh, presented. The Rocket AF study looked at apixaban and others ongoing. And so a new era of anticoagulation in atrial fibrillation and other indications has now uh, entered. And so with that, a, uh, a long cardiology countdown with a lot of terrific new studies that will uh, really positively impact our care for cardiovascular patients. I'm Chris Cannon for Cardiosource Video News.